Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video on how to write the lab report for experiment 3 SK015. So hopefully by now we have watched the video made by the lecturer in KMPP. So uh, this video uh, and then this document is actually available on your Google Classroom and I have shared it to you uh, via WhatsApp group. Okay, so we have further ado, let's look for our experiment 3. Okay, so for experiment 3, the title is actually The Determination of the Molar Mass of a Metal. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to standardize the hydrochloric acid solution and determine the molar mass of an alkaline earth metal by that titration method. Okay, so without further ado, now let's look for on how to write the lab report. Okay, so lab report 2, means what for the, ah, uh, here. Okay. So, in your lab report, what you should have is actually your name and class and then you also have your title. Okay, and then the next one is actually you are going to have your objective. Objective is actually based on the learning outcome uh, from your lab manual. Okay, so tadi uh, it's actually uh, cuma ubah sikit sahaja from your learning outcome. So, here we're just going to add yang to standardize the hydrochloric acid solution. To determine the molar mass of alkaline earth metal, the back titration method. Okay, so to standardize the hydrochloric acid solution, is actually what you're going to do, you're going to titrate the hydrochloric acid with a known molarity and volume of a base. Uh, so you can find out the molarity and then you can standardize the hydrochloric acid solution. Then besides that, uh, in your kali ni, determine the molar mass of alkaline earth metal. Yeah, previously, we used our titration ni only for determine the concentration, kan? Before this time around, by back titration method, we can actually determine the molar mass of the metal used in part B of our experiment. Tapi bagi hin dekat sini, alkaline earth metal ni is actually a group 2 element. So, group 2, for example, ni, um, apa ni? Beryllium, magnesium, calcium. Uh, tapi kita dapat tak tu eh? Nanti later we're going to calculate. By the end of the um, experiment ni, when we calculate it, nanti kita de can determine actually what is actually the metal used. Okay, so for the theory, it's actually based on introduction. Yang ni kamu copy paste sahaja from your introduction. Next is actually your procedure. So, for your procedure, make sure you have to change the sentences into a passive sentence. Okay, so, for this experiment, the uh, two part, part A, part B. Part A here, Mr. Bright, uh, sepatutnya simple untuk kamu because you have done it. It's actually the sama sahaja with your part B from your experiment too. Okay, cuma, uh, cuma dekat sini, uh, please, uh, uh, apa ni, ubah kamu punya concentration. Memang in your lab manual, it mentioned the concentration used is 0.1 molar. But actually, what we're going to use is we're going to use 1.0 molar of our sodium hydroxide. So, please change it. Ah, Yang ini memang, Miss nak, uh, apa ni? Supaya, ha, tukarkan the concentration. Untuk part B ni, it does not mention about the, uh, about the concentration. So, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, part B ni, uh, there's nothing about your concentration of it uh, now. So, there's no need to change anything lah. Tapi for your part A ni, you have to change from 0.1 molar to 1.0 molar. Because later, we're going to use it in our calculation. So, kena tukar lah. Okay, so next, uh, part B ni, you have to do it juga. But you do it yourself. Part, uh, and then, we're going to do our result. Okay, so the first part is actually the standardization of HCL. Okay, so from the information given, the concentration of now ataupun our MB is actually 1 molar. The volume of HCl ataupun volume of acid kita is 25 ml. So, maknanya in our conical flask, what we have is actually 25 ml of HCl. And then, we're going to pipe it with NaO. NaO ni is actually 1.0 molar. Okay, so from the titration, remember actually you're going to do it 4 times. Okay, why 4 times? First one is actually for your gross. Gross ni is actually your estimation. Okay, and then you're going to repeat it three more times. Make sure the reading is actually in two decimal places. So, tengok. Yang zero pun dia 0 0.00. Dia bukan 0 mil. Okay, and then, um, apa ni? For consistency part, it's actually uh, uh, for the difference between the volume itself. Uh, make sure that does not exceed 0 0.2 mil lah. So, yang ini the volume, the difference pun 0 0.1. So, it's nice. 
Okay, and then you're going to calculate the average volume. So, average volume usually we're going to take the best part, the, the, the best value ataupun the nearest part to each other. Ataupun usually kita akan ambil 1, 2, 3 ni lah and divide by 3. Hence, we will get the average volume of our sodium hydroxide. Okay, next, baru dah kita boleh cari our concentration of HCl. So, to find out the concentration, we're going to use the formula MAVA over MBVB equal to NA divided by NB. And to determine NA divided by NB, it's actually based on the stoichiometry. So, you have to write down the equation between your acid and base. Okay, so MA is actually molarity of acid is your unknown. VA is your volume of acid, 25 ml. Uh, MB, the concentration of base, yang kita dah ubah, 1.0 molar. Volume of base is the average volume that we have calculated previously. And the number of mole ni, kita tengok adalah 1 to 1 ratio. Hence, we will get the molarity of acid. So, sekarang ni kita dah dapat lah. We have standardized our HCl solution. Okay, so sekarang ni, uh, what we're going to do next. Okay, yang ini actually sebenarnya dah start masuk part B kamu. Tapi, we're going to calculate in part A dahulu. Okay, so now we're going to find out what is actually the number of mole of HCl. When actually there's 25 ml of HCl in our conical flask. Okay, so um, the number of mole equal to MV over 1000. Okay, why did I use this formula? Sebab my volume is in ml. So, bila my volume in ml, so I divide by 1000. If you want to use N equal to MV, make sure volume ni must be in liter. Hence, you will get the number of mole ataupun the total number of mole of HCl in your conical flask before you start your experiment for pipe B. Okay, so pipe B determination of molar mass of methane, ah, yang ni yang panjang sikit, you're going to bear with me first. Okay, yang ni sebenarnya Miss, uh, yang ini tak ada pun dalam dokumen yang Miss share tu, tapi yang ini just Miss nak overview lah, macam mana kita nak cari the molar mass tu sebenarnya, molar mass of your metal. Okay, so for example, before you start your experiment, uh, you have, for example lah, ni Miss buat sahaja, uh, first is actually your, you have your HCl kan. So, for example, you have total it at like 10 mole. Okay, next, in this experiment, is actually you're going to dissolve your metal in your conical flask and then you're going to, apa ni, shake it uh, until all the metal is dissolved. Okay, so, and, and reacted me, it means that the number of mole react, number of mole HCl reacted with metal. It's not all of it is going to react with our HCl. Data, tak sampai setengah pun yang akan react dengan our HCl. Okay, but then we can't determine it straight away. Ha, dia, dia susah sikit. So, tu kata the back titration method ni. So, how to know actually our reacted ni? It's actually we're going to find out the number of mole yang unreacted. The number of mole of HCl which is unreacted with our method. So, actually how we're going to find out? The number of mole of unreacted ni, uh, actually it will uh, react with our sodium hydroxide. Yang kita akan yang... We do our titration with. So, for example, kat sini memang kita tak boleh nak cari the number of mole of HCl ni. But from the equation, we know that it's 1 to 1 ratio kan? So, we know lah the number of mole of HCl is actually equal to the number of mole of NaO. So, contohnya dekat sini, kamu calculate. Uh, then, kat sini you get here is actually, uh, contohnya sini 8 mole. So, kat sini kamu tahulah actually the number of mole reacted dekat sini 2 mole. Uh, dia macam... Satu the back, back titration dia macam ha, terbalik macam tu sikit eh. Okay and then kenapa why do we have to determine the number of mole HCl yang reacted with metal ni? Because from there then we can do the stoichiometry where one mole of M ni, M ni is actually our unknown metal it, uh, reacted with our HCl. So nanti kita boleh cari so contohnya kat sini dah tahu dah mole HCl then we can find the number of mole of our metal. Ha, itu adalah brief overview. Yang ini koroversi yang calculation. So, let's look here. So, dekat sini, first and foremost, uh, determination of the molar mass. Okay, you still remember, it's actually, it's a 4 cm metal. Eh? Tak ingatlah, 4 cm tu. Then you're going to clean it with a cloth. And then you're going to divide into two. Okay, next is actually you're going to weigh in an analytical balance. So, this is actually the uh, the mass of your metal. Okay, so bila kamu dah mass the metal, kamu dah masukkan this sample and then you're going to 
apa ni kita akan uh, reactkan dia kan kita akan shakekan our solution tu ok tapi kita tak tahu sebenarnya berapa mole yang reacted with uh, our uh, berapa mole of HCl is reacted with our metal yet so sebab itulah kita kena cari yang ni hmm, yang unreacted ni dulu so inilah yang kita buat so that's why next step terus kita buat titration because we have two different sample kan and then we have two different titration ni tak perlu repeat banyak kali ok so from here kita bolehlah cari number of mole of unreacted kita So, the number of mole of unreacted HCl, again, yang left after dah completely reacted with metal M. Ha, yang dah, yang left over tu, yang dia akan, dia akan react with NaO. Okay, so dekat sini kita akan cari number of mole of NaO. Okay, why we have our, kita kena cari dengan NaO kita. Okay, sebab we do have our volume. Volume kita dah ada, molarity pun dah ada, which is 1.0 molar. So, we're going to find out for different calculation ni memang kena ada dua lah. Sample 1, sample 2. So, remember because the volume is actually in milliliter. So, I use N equal to MV over 1000. So, actually dekat sini dapatlah the number of mole for sample 1 and number of mole of sample 2. So, actually because the volume is different, hence actually kamu punya mole, uh, number of mole tu berbeza. It's fine. Nanti kita akan calculate average at the end of the reaction nanti. Okay, so kita dah tahu the number of mole of sodium hydroxide. Actually, we can find out the number of mole unreacted of HCl sebab 1 to 1 ratio between HCl and NaO. Okay, so kita dah carilah mole of our HCl. This is mole of HCl eh. HCl which is our unreacted HCl. Ha, unreacted HCl. Eh, unreacted HCl. Okay, so tadi kita dah cari dekat sini kan. Ha, macam kat dah cari total, dah tahu. Unreacted dah tahu. Ha, nak tahu reacted ni. How do how do we know reacted? Total. Total ni minuskan dengan unreacted ni. Barulah kita tahu yang reacted ni. Okay, so yang ini based on the information here. So yang total ni. Uh, HCl in conical flask. Yang conical flask yang awal tadi kita cari dekat part in. Ha, yang ni. Mul yang ni. Minuskan dengan yang unreacted HCl ataupun yang HCl reacted with NaO tadi uh, which is kita punya D value. So, we get F. Uh, sample tu pula. Uh, sebab di, value dia different ya. Eh? Kita kena cari jugalah. C ni masih lagi yang sama. Number of mole total dia masih lagi sama. Sebab each conical flask tu memang 25 mil kan. Uh, concentration sama. Dia punya volume sama. So, number of mole dia sama. Tapi yang untuk sample 1, sample 2 dia berbeza lah. Okay, so C minus E kita. So, we do get our mole yang reacted HCl. Okay, so ha, panjang dengan step dia. Next, bila kita dah tahu dah reacted HCl, barulah kita boleh comparekan dengan our metal here. Okay, based on the equation, we know that 1 mole of metal is equal to 2 mole of our HCl. So, we have to do the stoichiometry for, for both parts, sample 1 dengan sample 2. Okay, so once we have calculated the mole, uh, kita baru cari mole of kita punya metal. Next is actually we're going to find out the molar mass. How we're going to find out our molar mass? Uh, molar mass is actually uh, number of mole mass divided by molar mass. Okay, so dekat sini number of mole ni is the one that we find out from previous step. This one. Okay, mass ni is actually yang tadi, number one tadi kita cari. Uh, this one. 0.0677 dengan uh, sample tu 0.0682. Uh, so, dekat sini. Kita dapatlah the value itself. This one. This one. Okay. So, we get our molar mass. So, dekat sini molar mass. Molar mass. Hence, we will get uh, different molar mass lah. Sepatutnya memang dapat different pun. Sebab kamu punya mol, uh, number of mole beza. Your mass pun pun beza. But it's fine because at the end there, we're going to calculate average molar mass. J plus K, yang ni make sure the tinggal pula divide by 2. Okay, and then make sure the unit is actually gram per mole. Hence, you will get the average molar mass is equal to uh, the value. Uh, tu yang dia panjang sikit sebenarnya. <laughs> dia punya calculation tu lah dia sebenarnya kan. Uh, steps ni nampak senang. If you look back at your steps of your procedure tu, simple saja. 
Uh, kertas fashion sekali je Tapi nak cari tu yang susah eh. uh, Tak apa, kalau tak faham boleh tengok lagi sekali uh, For the explanation Okay, so sebenarnya uh, The metal used in this experiment Is magnesium With a molar mass of this value 24.3 So tengoklah uh, That is the actual one Tapi experimental The one that you've done Ataupun the one yang lecture dia ni dah buat Okay, so bagi tahulah berapa sebenarnya Gram per mol ni Okay, kalau dia jauh, dia, dia beza tak apa, it's fine. Uh, kita akan, dis, we're going to discuss it in our discussion. Okay, so for the discussion, remember what we're going to have is actually our possible error precaution. Okay, tapi sebab um, the uh, the experiment itself, actually part A tu uh, is our, dengan part B ada titration kan. So, yang ini mostly my possible error and my precaution is actually about titration itself. Remember, possible error tu actually you can find out yourself based on the procedure. Apa yang kita boleh buat salah? Okay, so possible error, yeah, the first one, parallax error, air bubble trap in the burek tip, misjudging the color of indicator near the end point, supposed to be pale pink, mana tahu dapat um, apa ni, hmm, kamu dapat cakap lemah genta tu, and then inaccurate volume of titran. Okay, so and this is actually the precaution. So, when we mention about this is our error. So, setiap satu ni, it's actually, ah, ni dia punya precaution. Ni is precaution for this error. This one, precaution for this error. Okay, yang ini pun misal explain banyak. So, yang ini pun misal explain it previously. Ha, pun penat kan. Kamu tengok video tu ni pun mesti, kamu rasa, misal rasa kalau kamu nak try fahamkan yang ini, mesti penat sikit. Tapi tak apa. Then, repeat the titration three times. Okay, so that is for your discussion. Kalau contohnya kamu nak tambah sikit, Nak tambah lagi pun boleh juga. But here is the minimum lah yang is bagi. And last but not least is our conclusion. Okay, conclusion kita. Kita tengok dekat sini. Remember, we have to answer based on our um, objective. So, objective kita tadi, standardize the hydrochloric acid solution and determine the molar mass. So, kita jawab lah. So, our conclusion is the concentration of HCl is uh, this molarity, uh, yang ini B Banyak kita ni calculation kan Daripada E sampai L kita dah cari Okay So, and the molar mass of the metal is Yang kamu dah dapat dekat sini Okay, so uh, That's the end of the lab report For experiment 3 uh, Dengan experiment dia straightforward lagi Bila experiment tu, tapi calculation dia dah pening So, good luck everyone <laughs>